Okay. Yeah, I will go on. Okay. So then, the the first three questions is about all assets. Okay, I'm going to try to somehow validate this 80, 80 20 principle. Okay, basically later on, I'll explain it what 80 20 principle is. The number one is so the probability density function of parental distribution is identified as follows. Right? So we do have parental PDF Y parental is A theta A, then Y minus A plus one. Okay, then pay attention to range of the Y's. Then not, not surprising to see it's Y bigger than theta, then small infinity. And then A is bigger than zero, so in infinity. This this domain right here, basically y bigger than theta, basically basically tells you that it's in terms of health in terms of healthcare expense, you you won't get anything lower than theta, which which means that it's you do having something as a minimum expense of your whole PDF of whole distribution of healthcare expenses. It's okay. Then in terms of income research as well you were having some minimal income, minimal wage. Index in the health, in the, uh, in the uh, income research as well. So it's not surprising to see that this parental distribution uh, is well dirty uh, applied to something about money in healthcare. Okay, good. So then in the beginning, we do have A, and the theta as parameters, okay? Right now, I trying to do one thing is, I won't give you anything about multi-dimensional in the final, okay? Well, if it's, if it's multi-dimensional, I will keep that as simple as possible. So you won't get really, really complicated like solving for MLE and two parameter system, something like that. So don't worry about it. Okay, more likely I'll give you single dimension now, which means if I actually give you two parameter distribution like parental distribution, I will more likely to give you something as what something fixed. For example, a in a, a assume known quantity. So because a known, so only thing you estimate is theta. Okay, then I say, show that it's the MLE of theta is theta hat, it's a Y1 hat. Okay, so it should be easy, right, to you, I think, in, st in, this, in this stage. To find MLE, just finding what the local function is. Local function in this question is what, join PDF, so I from one to N, then join PDF, A theta A, then yi, then minus a plus one, right? Don't forget about whenever your yi depending on the range of parameters, just write that down, okay? As indicator function after PDF to make sure that you don't miss anything, okay? Good, so I think you guys should be, you guys should know where I'm going right now, right? So you have a n right here, theta, uh, it's a n, I think. Then you have consecutive product. It doesn't give you anywhere to go. You could just write that. I think most importantly, it's you deal with this guy right here. In consecutive product, you always write what? You always write as long as my minimal one bigger than theta. Then I cover everything about consecutive product. Okay, then I guess this is easy for you right now to finding out where is my MLE right here, right? My local function, the function of theta, they evaluate what the whole function is as a function of theta, right? The number one is 
you evaluate the first function right here. You evaluate this function right here, right? So this guy's no theta doesn't matter. This guy's no theta doesn't matter as well. What matters is what? This term right here. And then that's a function of theta. And imagine what our function is, decreasing function, increasing function, or quadratic function. It looks like what? Because a n is positive, right? A positive, n positive for sure. So a times n for sure is positive. Then in a power positive, so that means it's a function, increasing function of theta. Right? Okay? So there's something you have to understand how to evaluate the function. And then this guy is also function of theta as well. So you put down y one is right here. Okay, you put on one is right there, and then you imagine if your theta, right? This guy, this guy is one only when theta smaller than y one. That means only this guy right here having values of ones. Then bigger than that, bigger than that, the whole thing becomes zero. That means only up to y one have something to say, and then whenever y theta equals to y1 then bigger than y1 this guy becomes zero okay then this is what's supposed to be about function of the theta in terms of function so that means by this picture or by this graph three really nothing really easy to see what theta ml is right because y1 this point right here actually maximize ml it's actually maximize backward function so by by joining that graph you three by joining that graph it's really not difficult to see that your theta hat mle is y1 that's basically not that's basically what a is asking for okay so in b basically is what looking for lrt Okay, if you look at LRT, basically you should write down definition. You got a bunch of points. Okay, this is for testing theta is theta zero versus state H1 theta doesn't equal theta zero. So just pull out your slides, pull out your notes, anything like that, trying to write down it. Lambda X as a definition of LRT. Okay, this Y symbol right here. Okay, definition is what? Supremum theta in the null space makes my stack with function. Then supremum theta in oval space makes mums the lack of function. Right? So that's definition, typical definition of LRT it's okay. Then you are trying to evaluate your numerator and the denominator, right? So right here, again, it's in terms of numerator, supremum under null space, easy, right? Because null space, null space only have what? Single points, right? Say that equals say that not. So that means nothing but say that not maximize lack of function straightforward okay then denominator it's easily also straightforward because of all space your supremum over over space is a limitation basically that means what you find in a is a maximizer of lack of function it's okay so you do need to know one thing is hopefully that doesn't confuse you right now but i don't want to mention it because i don't think i've another opportunity to mention that so let me say here so if you do feel confused about what i'm saying then you need to spend more time on that so if i do having that it's bigger or smaller then it's another story you basically this guy right here, you don't need to talk about if 
y1 bigger than theta zero if y1 is smaller than theta. If you know less, it's good for you right now. If you don't know if I'm writing less, you don't need to pay attention to why I, why I, why I say that. Okay, so I will, I will see if I can 2018 question to coming out like that way. If not, I can talk about it on Wednesday as well to let you know what I what I mentioned. What to, to let you know what I said about this. Why, whenever it's inequality not equal, then you don't need to pay attention to the range of the theta. Or theta zero is okay. So since this is equal doesn't equal, so everything pretty straightforward. Okay, then you just write it down about your lack of function is you can go back to A right here. You plug in where the where the theta is. For example, write A N, you say that zero, A N, then consecutive product, I want to N, then Y I minus A plus one. Everything is the same, just plug in where the theta zero is. Okay. So then the same thing right here, you plug in where y1 is, uh, where the theta is with the y1. I one one to n for a little bit. So y i minus a plus one and then right here of course y1 so y1 right here is really not doesn't matter at all okay it got to be satisfied okay good and then you'll find a bunch of things to cancel out so let me not confusing here so let me take out something here so you don't confuse about where i am so then as you can see, is what cancel out, cancel out, cancel out, cancel out. Okay, eventually equals to right here is what you have your say that zero y one with power a n, and then indicator function say that zero so then y one x. Okay, good, and then. Remember, it's been a lot of time, many, many times already, right? So right now, original LRT, lab ratio test, tells me that is I need to find something. Why, basically, satisfy why lambda y is more than c as a rejection region. Okay, then because lambda y is p distribution, maybe complicated. And then more than likely, we are trying to find something which is what? Equivalent using some easy statistics. Okay, is statistic right here, bigger or smaller than C star? I don't know which one, you need to evaluate bigger or smaller than C star. And you ask yourself in the lambda x, in the lambda x right here, or in lambda x right here, did you see that in statistics? You do. What's that? Y1, right? In terms of MLE. So then you're trying to working hard, trying to draw a graph again. So you have lambda right here. And then you have easy statistic right here. Then trying to understand whether or not this function, okay? Increasing function or decreasing function or maybe quadratic function of y1 of y1 y1 yes okay of course you have two things right here the first one okay the first part does that increasing function or decreasing function of y1 okay Y1 in denominator, A and N positive, this guy is decreasing function, okay? And then second part with that Y1 as well, okay? That tells you, you need to pin down where the theta zero is, 
right? That guy tells you that as someone as y1 bigger than theta zero, you have a value of a function because that equals to one. If a y1 is one theta zero, that means what? That means your left hand side of theta zero is going to become zero right here. Then up to some way, then you de decreasing function x. Okay, then things I said it. Okay, so we need to find equivalence given that this guy is C. So that means I'm finding this region as a rejection region. Then mapping to the Y1 in the X axis, then which one actually having that, actually having that as a region, having the lambda X, lambda Y, so on and C. So not, hard, not surprising to see, let me redraw that. So this is y, this is x, right here, right? So that means this is something right here as well. So that means you do have this guy right here, or the C star. And then this guy right here is equivalent region. So that means my equivalent region in terms of y1, y1, okay. Just a little case because it's data already. So y1, b go equals to c star. But in the meantime, it's don't forget about, don't forget about this region right here, also small and c. So that means you do have all right here, y1 then small than, y1 small equal to then theta zero. Okay, so both regions are having that value of uh, having that equivalent region of lambda y small and c it okay making sense okay so especially when you look at this kind of null hypothesis they say that equals theta zero right and then say that each alternative is say that doesn't equal theta zero you normally will anticipate two-sided test right two-sided regions okay so then i mean let's say not equal it's safer to say so because you know it's really awkward right here in terms of big or small than theta zero i mean it's continuous variables either way will be fine okay so i think maybe just to equal not confusing everyone because i always write equal Okay, good. So again, it's whenever you see the kind of H, H naught is theta equals theta zero, H alternative is doesn't equal, even you will normally anticipate two side test. Then you have two things right here to work to, for you to work on. And then how to find C star then, right? Hopefully typical for you right now because of questions. Okay, yeah. big one noise. So, um, Hopefully, it's a typical standard for you for now. I keep saying so, right? How do I find C star? I'm trying to use in what? Type one arrow to find C star, okay? Or size to find C star. And then by definition of size or test, or type one arrow is given no hypothesis. Then probability of my critical region. Okay? And again, good news is Supreme, um, again, no hypothesis, only have single points. So you don't have to pay attention to where the Supreme on it because it's really nothing but theta not only single point, right? Everything's the same inside this rejection region. It's. And then, then you could working on either way, right? So basically right here is what? Probability say that not, right? Y1 bigger than C star, or become plus, probability say that not, and then Y1 smaller than 
data not right here okay so this is one tricky part of this question that okay up to this stage some people might write this right okay say so because i do that all the time it's what i do have two tail so let's split alpha let's split alpha if you if you know less good for you actually because you do know what my standard approach is but pay one thing to this whole thing is the probability right here imagine what is probability give you a sense of what right this probability tells me it's if my true say that if my true say that say that not how likely my y i swan say that not let's how likely this got actually zero isn't it because my y got to be bigger than say that i got to be bigger than say that not right here right so if my say that actually say that not then my y have zero probability of that why i sworn and say that not that so that means doing so actually waste actually waste your type one error because this guy right here is for sure zero so this is how tricky this question would be okay so that means you don't have to write divided by because your second term is going to become probably zero so that means guys probability say that zero then y one then bigger than theta no this is that right here okay so then how do i write this probability nothing by what finding y one cdf or oh, actually finding y one survival function right by doing that okay but i typically whenever it's Whenever it's maximum or minimum of statistic, I typically do one thing. So what? Y one bigger than C star. That means everyone bigger than C star. Okay. Then with what? With power n, right? Okay. So given C star knowledge, right? So Y one bigger than C star now. Y one bigger than C star. Y one bigger than C star. Y two bigger than C star. And your Y n bigger than C star. So everyone bigger than C star okay so that means only thing that deriving is what what is survival function of original pdf okay so i will leave it to you so i will write it down as answer directly this guy right here is what bigger than so or no it's i should write so it's probability of y1 probability of y1 bigger than y given theta okay is say that y a right nothing but deriving one minus cdf you can derive that from pdf so i will skip that so then right here is what i plug in say c i plug in c star where the y is then with a then with n right i have power a right here then times m become a n x okay so I do have alpha e or oh, of alpha equals to this guy right here. Then to solving for C star then taking log on both ends, I think. Log alpha equals to a n, then log theta, then minus log C star x. Right? So then you just do do edge of a little bit. I think you can get what? So I think let me do on the side log alpha divided by a n equals log theta minus log c star okay so actually it's easier just as saying it's e da, 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 then log alpha a n then times inverse then c then theta i think equal to c star let me double check so c star equals to that i think so say that zero of course say that not right here say that not times exponential minus log alpha a n this guy right here eventually become say that a then alpha minus one over a n actually 
Let's see, star ads. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So then say dana of uh, minus one divided by a a in hosting. Okay, a in hosting. Make sure on that. Okay. So that means you can see stuff from here. So you can write a uh, going back to that critical region. Right here, right? So this is the critical region right here. Okay. This is the plugin that you see stuff become eventually it's y1. Y1 right here, smaller than or bigger than, bigger than C star, theta zero, alpha minus A divided by A N, or you will Y1, small equal to theta, ah, right here. Okay, become your critical region, right? Not surprising to see right here, right? Okay. That guy right here is very intuitive because if you if you actually if you not hypothesis say that he will say that now right as long as you collect is something so when say that now you will be 100 percent for sure that it's you will say that not going to be said that now isn't it right because you do know your y wants the minimum model statistics is going to bigger than say that now this guy right here basically means that it's as long as my minimal one smaller than something you set up as you set a lower bound, they are not it's then I'm going to reject it. Right now I pass it for sure. Okay. Good. Okay. Let's be any question on A and B. Let me see. I got a chat right here. Why will a second term have probability zero right here? Okay, so uh, Herrick, you got a question for that, right? Okay, so let me yeah, use the, the, the like the probability of theta naught, uh, y1 less than theta naught going to right. zero. Plus your, right, okay. So right here, let me take this out. So right here, you're asking, this guy, right? Yeah. Okay. So look at this. So assuming you are y ones, y one to y n or bigger than theta, right? What is probability give you is what? If my theta actually theta not, right? Your theta under now passes is theta not. Okay. So so called under your not. Under your null hypothesis means what? That means your true state and theta not. That means your y1 to yn or bigger theta not. Making sense? Yeah. Okay. So that means if your y1 to yn or bigger than theta not, so probability of smallest one smaller than theta not is zero. Right? Everyone right here has to be bigger than theta not. Your smallest one right here, y1, still need to be bigger than theta now. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. You got it? Okay, so that yeah. probability of y1 smaller than theta now is the left hand side right here. It's no way that would happen. If you choose theta, it's actually theta now. Good? Yep. Okay, yep. Okay. Any question on A and B? This guy is actually tricky. Okay. Even though you do have in two tail of the rejection region, but you only have one, you only need to give your alpha to one side. Okay. So then in C, okay. In C, basically trying to ask you, hey, to write me CDF, then using CDF methods to find the compass interval. Okay, so then again, I'm going to leave that how to write in the CDF of Y1 to you. I think it's a typical drill. And then trying to find out whether or not it's true. Okay, you can either using 
the you can either using the um, formula to find PDF, then to find CDF, or you can actually use an easy way that again it's probability of y one. So right here, mm, let me write more specifically. So your CDF right here by definition is probability of y one small than y, and then you are going to know that y one small than y not going to help. Bigger help would be switch your sign, so switch your survival function as a probability of y one bigger than y. Then you know this guy right here one minus probability y one in original PDF. Then which power n, okay? Then using that possible easier for you to deriving the CDF of y one as the minimum of the statistic is. I think it's easier if I do have this guy right here. Okay, good. So that means let me change this guy so y right here. Okay, so again it's. You look at this, right? So you do have CDF methods. So y one here and then y theta. So in CDF method, trying to find comes interval, they need to evaluate what so function of theta right here. Okay. Really pay attention to when you draw when you draw a feed, when you draw a graph, then which y is which y axis which which y axis and which x axis is so that will helping you out to see right here every time i write something different right so really need to be specific you need to be specific about that otherwise you have a weird conclusion about a function okay right here in city of methods i said you put your y x y axis the cdf x axis is y theta okay and you're actually looking for what increasing or decreasing function i said usually it's decreasing function in terms of cdf versus your theta and you check on this it's an increasing function or decreasing function of theta you're going to argue that decreasing function what's decreasing function even though theta with power a a n is positive Theta with a n is increasing function of theta, but don't forget about you to have minus ten right here to make the whole thing to make the whole thing as a decreasing function of theta. It's okay. Good increasing function of theta, but because of minus term becomes decreasing function of theta. Then you are going to say, I do have this guy, do this guy right here. This guy alpha one, right? Alpha one, this guy one minus alpha two. By doing so, basically it's we are going to using CDF as a natural quantile. Okay. So CDF is natural quantile because CDF master CDF is natural your one zero one. Okay. So CDF itself is a natural quantile. And then uniform zero one. So then quantile to quantile, that means alpha one to one minus alpha two. Then have alpha one plus alpha two equals to alpha. Right? Quantile to quantile inside guy is one minus alpha. Inside guy right here. It's one minus alpha probability. Okay? Good. And then general CDF is what? Because CDF itself, in this case, is decreasing function of theta. So you, you will know that it's in order to find the lower bound of the theta right here. Okay? You need to use the upper bound of the one minus alpha x. That means, in general, I'm saying in general, trying to find lower bound, you basically writing down one minus alpha 2 f of cdf methods given their theta is actually a slow bound right here okay trying to plug in theta as a lower bound then trying to solve for theta to satisfy this this equation 
Okay, doing the same way in general of our one, you are trying to using what? Lower bound of lower bound of the CDF as alpha one, then matching to this guy theta, uh, to an upper bound of theta h, upper bound. Again, using this equate using this equation to solving for theta as an upper bound, right here. Okay, that's in general, and and but in this case, we actually got lucky because. You can just do some easy operation. You can actually isolate theta in the middle. What I'm saying that is right here, you alpha one bigger than, you do have your CDF right here, one minus theta then y then a n. But because this guy is y one CDF, so you need to plug in where your y's y one is. Okay, so then one minus alpha two right here. The way I say so is you can actually move this guy here, move this guy here. So let's do that. So that means uh, alpha one minus one small than minus theta y one then a n then small than minus one, right? Minus alpha two x. Okay. Then you do a minus term right here. So that become, be, be, you need to be careful. You put minus, upper bound become lower bound, okay? Then say that y1, then a n as well. Then upper bound become lower bound. One minus upper one edge. And then you taking that power with a n right here, right? If alpha two one over a n then small than theta then y one small than one minus alpha one with one over a n x right here. Just taking a pop a n on both ends again a n is a positive. So when you're taking your power to both ends, your side doesn't change. Okay. Just be careful handling this kind of case. And you can see really easy to see that what? Really easy to do operations. To put theta in the middle. You've got to answer about this is lower bound, this is upper bound. Okay, good. And then it's actually the same thing solving this guy and this guy to get a lower bound and an upper bound it. Okay, so you can do that in general case to see if that's the same, but it's actually the same, right? It's not how to imagine it's actually the same because, because from, from here to here, I only do some like an easy, a easy algebra to operate, and then to put theta in the middle, okay? You are more welcome to try with or not. It's actually the same in terms of solving two equations in general case. But in this one, you can actually just doing some operations. You isolate theta in the middle, such that you can say right hand side lower bound, right hand side upper bound. Making sense? Okay. That's in C. Any question in C? Okay, let me see. Okay, nothing popping out. Okay, let's move on to D right here. So in D, so usually I give really hard question in technical exam. So because you guys at home, so do a bunch of things, you know, you know, in the past years. Okay, so then sometimes it's open-ended questions. Like saying that, well, how do you think about this? How do you think about that? Give me intuitive explanation about why this guy become better than that guy, some of the things like that. So I'm not necessarily have, when I publish a solution key, I'm not necessarily writing down specifically how to answer it because sometimes it's open-ended questions. Okay, so then, but this one, I think we be able to do that. Okay, so, well, so in D it's, trying to convert convert the rejection regions of your RT in B. Okay, so then go back to B. 
My L R T in B is let me see this guy right here. Right, this guy is my L R T in B right here. Okay, so then this guy's rejection region. So you need to write in down what acceptance region first. So trying to find some acceptance region, maybe just bar right here. Okay. Any separate regions is fine. So I think this guy is smaller than say that one, bigger than small than smaller than say that one, projection region, bigger than that one acceptance, bigger becomes smaller. So I think my hopefully I, I'm right, but because I don't have that answer key in my solution. So I think this guy is my accept acceptance region, Y1, and then Y1 bigger than theta zero, Y1 smaller than theta zero, then alpha minus alpha minus one over A in right here. Okay, I think this is my acceptance region in some sort. I think so. I should be confident on that. Okay, so to the market. This acceptance region. Okay, then remember how I teach you about how do I convert of rejection region to the 95% of one minus alpha comes interval? Bring out your eraser, right? You're taking out nuts. Then you got it. Okay, so I basically code it. I can write one minus alpha equals the probability of theta swollen y one then swollen theta minus one divided by a in it. Then you try your best to put theta in the middle. Okay, so right here I think it's maybe a little tricky, right? Uh, da, 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 da. acceptance region y1 bigger than theta right here so in the left hand side right here i can say theta smaller than yn okay so i mean theta is smaller than y1 theta smaller than da, 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 da. i want this side right i want this side bigger to smaller okay I want this side right here. So y theta is y1, theta is only y1, right? Yes, y1 right here. Okay, then I think basically, basically this guy right here will give me right here. So that means theta bigger than minus. Well, that guy still give me smaller. I do that if I take him, power of y1 at a in it yeah i should be careful on that then so y1 a n y1 minus one yeah that means say that's still bigger or smaller oops i don't anticipate that though a in it both actually give me the same direction do I miss anything? How about we we'll stop here in D? Okay, I can publish it. I, let me let me be careful on this. I don't have solution key for now. I thought I got to. I I thought I can isolate say that in the middle, but do I miss anything right here? Let me give me five seconds to. Say that zero small than y one is my rejection region. Y rejection acceptance y one bigger than theta zero. Yes, and then the other way, y one should be smaller than say that zero y one smaller. Yeah, then y both. Give me the same. Okay, so I'm going to stop right here on D. I'll definitely give you uh, better answers. Uh, 
gym rule what do you mean by alpha oh okay you are saying it you don't have to pay attention to the other side because you don't have alpha to the other side to satisfy that Yes, in the second step of the the confidence interval, you missed an uh, alpha. Where? So you mean that my equation right here? Uh, in the second. In D? In D? Yeah, yes. In the second one? You mean this guy yeah. or this guy? Yeah. Right, so I'm trying to, this is my acceptance region, right? Yes. And then I'm trying to, so this is one minus alpha right here. Uh-huh. And then what's wrong going from here to here? Uh, um, you. I'm trying to pin down theta the, in the middle. The, the probability of theta uh, less than one, y one less than theta, uh, times alpha power. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. So does that help? Oh, that oh alpha is actually, ah, uh, thank you. So. That means uh, maybe I'm still okay, right? So really, it's not right here. Alpha minus one, then a n. If I invert that, so does that give me anything good? So the side doesn't change. Okay, so let me see. Okay. So that means y1 small n theta alpha minus one divided by a n, right? So that means even this is positive, right? So positive. So y1 then alpha what? A n it, right? Times a n times, wait, wait, wait. Inverse, inverse. 1 over a m actually 1 over a m okay so that means yeah thank you so that means i can safely to write y1 alpha 1 divided by a n okay yep so then that means i can move on thanks let me make sure that let me make sure I did not make any stupid mistake. Da, 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 da. Okay, I think so. I think I'm good. Okay, great. Okay, so that means you can still isolate theta in the middle to convert the one minus alpha comes interval. Okay, good. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay. Then I think I passed to asking you as well, which one would you prefer, right? And in C, this is this is in this is this is a ver this is converting the test results in C, uh, in B, and then in C, I also having another interval. It's this is another interval. This is from. This is from C by using CDF methods. Apparently, two guys are different, right? And then eventually I say, which one would you prefer, right? And then <clears throat> the criteria we are using more often is what? Which one having either shorter length of observed interval or expected interval. In this case, I think they are relatively identical because actually, so for example, you observe one is what the, the lens of the lens. It's y1 minus y1 then alpha one over a n. Right, number one. Number two, observe lens equals to what? Just y one. It's one minus alpha one. Then one minus a n minus alpha two. 
one over a in x. Okay, so oh, I want to write this as this guy uh, taking out y one. Eventually, is one minus right here. So that means actually, in this question, it doesn't matter you compare observed lens or expected lens. Okay, sometimes I would say do expected lens because expected lens is more in average sense, right? Doing that from here to here, you should take expectation of y1. It's, then this guy right here is constant, remaining the same. Okay, and then the other guy right here at the lens on y1, they're both identical, which by any means is eventually compared to which one is larger or smaller in the second term. That means in both cases, you compare this guy and this guy to see what happens. Okay, so I don't actually have an answer for you, but we can actually do some plugging things to see what happens. For example, if I plug in alpha one equals alpha two equals alpha over two, what happens? Did you actually know which one is better? Hmm, I don't actually know which one is better then. Okay, but you guys are more than welcome to do evaluation for functions, actually, in this case, for example, it's, you could definitely to do that a minus alpha over two, one over a n minus um, alpha over two, then a n right here. To, this, to see this guy's bigger or smaller than zero as a function of alpha alpha right here okay you could do differentiation to see what happens maybe do second directive as well to see what happens okay this is a more rigorous way to evaluate the functions past the negative okay or you can really just naively to plug in to plug in alpha it's 0.05 then a choose any positive for example one then M, for example, two, something like that, to see which one have bigger value of that. This guy bigger or this guy bigger, right? And you guys are at home, so you guys can plug in numbers to see which one is bigger. Okay, good. So that basically, that is kind of things it's taking at home. You could do a bunch of things to really evaluate the function of alpha okay good okay i think this number question number one any question on question number one in general if not i'm going to save it Twenty twenty zero four is 27 Okay, so any question on Q1? So if not, I'm going to pull out, uh, let me see. Uh, I'm trying to get a new page of, I'm trying to see how I do it. Uh, it's different from how I saw usually. Um, how do I get a whole new page? Okay. Hmm. Okay. Mm. I don't know. I don't have the options right now to give me a whole new page. Uh, right. Normally, why do left and right? Okay. Can I cannot do that right now? So then, if I cannot do that. How about this? What happened to this? Uh, no, no, no. Okay, I'm going to fight a little bit. So give me some seconds. I usually have some options that are writing this guy, this corner right here, but I cannot see right now. 
to give me a whole new page of the okay if not forget about it let's go to q2 to see how far i can go okay so in q2 so-called 80 20 principle is actually this it's so people would think about uh the medical expense is really large so then larger become really large so that means 80 20 percent principle is 20 percent of patients actually taking 80 percent of the total healthcare expenses okay so i'm trying to collect the data to see whether or not the medical expense is actually like that way so i'm going to use it in the same pdf but right now i'm going to assume theta is known right here using the same pdf and then in AS, again, I'm going to go back to the CDF. So my CDF is right here. So let me write down CDF. So f of y, then y equals, then a theta a, then y minus a plus one, okay? Theta bigger than y, so infinity then a is positive okay right now say that is known quantity so that means you already know like a function for a actually differentiable so that means i from one to n then a say that a then y minus a plus one okay even though i can write i zero say that to y right here y i y i right here Okay, it actually doesn't matter at all in the second term, but I can write that because theta is fixed, so. Okay, then if in terms of function of A right here, then yi minus A plus one, then I, then zero, theta bigger than yi, okay. I want one to end right here. Okay, then because of the this guy only is a function of a right here, this guy not a function of a, so that means you can actually write log double function of a, then propose this guy is n log a plus a n log theta, then minus a plus one then summation i from one to n then log y i it okay good so this guy become it's not it's not equal proportional to so that guy become differentiable so you guys working on the log like a function okay da, da, da. i'm going to just skip that because i think that's easy for you guys to handle that saves some time for multiple for multiple questions. Okay. So then, but I do want to mention one thing is don't forget about to check about second direct. Oh, well, my second directive, I'll let you know if that's easy to evaluate. And uh, this guy is easy. This guy eventually minus a, then a minus two. This guy's more than zero because this guy right here, so it should be intuitive to say so in zero. Say, like, whole thing right here, second directive, it's really hard for you to understand whether or not big or small than zero. Don't forget about, you have only, don't forget about you have another tool to say what you plug in a equal a head right here okay a head right here would be something soft around here equal to zero okay then if you okay so that guy, I don't give an answer, right? Do I give an answer in the questions? I do, 
So that means you show that MLE is a head, like that one in the questions. Your file a head is that way. Okay, pretty long. Okay, so then in B, right now it's okay in B. In B, we are trying to find UMP test, right? So whenever we are. We do pattern recognition. We're trying to see why your null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Again, it's pardon me on some review. If you have simple versus simple right here, then what theory are you going to use to find a UMP test? Answer is demon, uh, demon, right? And the answer is Demon Pearson Lima. Okay. Mm. So Demon Pearson. Right? And what if I said it's not a pass is simple versus alternative is one sided theta bigger equal to bigger and theta one not equal to. Theta one. Why if it's simple, simple versus composite, but it's one sided. Which is theory are you using? You find all sorts of even pairs and lemma, and then they'll have the same rejection region, like this guy right here. Okay. And then the third one is what? Composite versus composite. Both are one sided. Begin cell zero. Okay. Composite versus composite. Both are one sided. And which theory are you using? You know, as Carlin, Ruben theory you're going to use that and now you're going to pull out the slides and look at what current Ruben theory told you then what current Ruben theory told you is what you need to find number one sufficient statistic okay number two most importantly is what you need to show that your PDF have monotone like ratio property Okay, so then based on these two guys, you are trying to find that. For example, number one is how do I find sufficient how do I find sufficient statistics? Right? And then remember how do I find sufficient statistics? I can either using factorial theory or I can use what? Exponential family, which is the most easy way to do so. In this case, because theta is given, then that part is constant. So the PDF in terms of function of A is exponential family, which means you just try to, to write down it. So yi, so for example, if you do that, don't put y then. So if y given A, right, is what the PDF is. Then you're going to prepare PDF right here. So A is theta A, so that means A theta A, then y, then minus a plus one, indicator function theta bigger than y. It's, okay, then you do your best to write h, x, c, theta, right? I mean, I'm, right, I'm reading as a normal donation, but right here it's h, y, and then c, a. Because a is the parameters, then exponential then exponential, then uh, W theta, then T X, right? Okay, you try your best to write your CD like that way. So right here is what? You might wanna imagine it's function of Y, function of Y, then that means it's constant, okay? 
then I think that's only constant you have, right? Right here, this guy become your h of y at h only single y, not y tilde, right here. Okay, and then c a, then the function of a, then say that a because say that constant as well. So that means a say that a could be your function of c a. You guys see that? And then this guy right here more likely a contribution of exponential. And then you don't see exponential in the original PDF. Then how to create exponential? Then you create exponential, then taking log on their quantity then. So that means that quantity become minus a plus one, then log y. Right? And then it looks like this guy is your ty, and this guy is what your was. Okay, the tricky part is actually ty is minus log y. So, pardon me on that because I do not want to answer it. So, I purpose writing down is minus log y right here, then putting this guy as your ty. Okay, so then you write your PDF in terms of exponential family, then you can know that you can directly claiming, right? You're not only about sufficient statistics, but also about complete statistics, right? Although you don't need that complete statistics right now by current urban theory. Only thing you can know is sufficient statistics, say TY right here. Then put down summation I from one to N, then minus log yi right here become your tx okay good so that's how that's how your sufficient statistic is and then the second step to show that mlr property again i want to mention one thing it's okay mlr property by the surface means that it's you don't need to take a ratio of two join PDF, okay? MLR for monotone likelihood ratio, right? Something that likelihood ratio. And then eventually, you are going to say this guy is increasing or decreasing function of TY of your sufficient statistics if A2 bigger than A1, okay? If you look at slides of MLR property, you will see that that's my definition of MLR property. Actually, my slides only saying this, increasing function of TY, okay? But it could be easy to change the size of TX. You can actually become increasing or decreasing function, okay? Or you'll, well, you, you might see that a little bit to see what happened. I will, I will mention that later on. To, to, to see why I said it's increasing or decreasing actually to one side away <coughs> of your TY ads. Okay, but keep in mind it's if A2 is bigger than A1 ads. Okay, then you do that then, right? Because you do have a double function from A ads right here, right? You do have a double function right here. So it means you just plug in, right? If you have in there LA2, LA1. So that means the ratio right here, LA2 divided by LA1 is what? So right here, AN, right? I don't have that. Oh, maybe I can just write down what I have in my solution key. So I, so pardon me on that because I don't have that memory to keep in mind everything, but I do have solution key to show me that it's A2 minus A1 is say N, then theta N, a2 minus a1 then having that consecutive product that one point to n y i x then which minus a2 minus a1 okay hopefully you can see that right here so right here is my micro function you plug in a2 you plug in a2 plug in a2 right here okay you got a numerator then you plug in a1 
plugging A1, plug A1, you got your denominator. So that means you take a ratio, A1, right? Then you take a ratio, this guy can so out, this guy doesn't have A. Okay, everything is like, you know, A2 divided by A1, then was called in. Okay, really hard, not hard to surprise you to see that way. I think it should be easy for you guys to see that. Okay, then you do your best, right? Say so if I do have this condition, A2 bigger than A1, so I mean this guy bigger than one. A2 bigger than A1 means this guy is what? Positive. Okay, then this guy positive as well. And then you're talking about function of the Tx right here, okay? But Tx right here, you don't actually see that directly. The point is you might want to change the one way of A2 minus A1 and theta and A2 minus A1. You do want to create in Tx by exponential, right? Exponential, then summation log y i x right here okay so minus a2 minus a1 okay then tricky parts i do have its minus term right here so that means you have to give up right here inside guy right here so it means whole thing hopefully you can follow with me this guy actually minus but it's gonna become positive. This guy become positive. Then A2 minus A1. Okay. So you can think about it. So whenever you need to give up your power inside of consider product, and then you do exponential right here, it's actually the power is inside minus the inside right here. Okay. So then I want this guy is exactly what I'm looking for the ty. That's just a patient statistics. And then again, this guy bigger than one, this guy bigger than zero, this guy bigger than zero, this guy bigger than zero. That means as long as your ty increase, right? Okay, whole ty increase, exponential increase, power bigger than zero increase, everything your ratio of the black hoods increase, such that you have a monotone type of ratio. You guys see that? I do know a little bit struggling to say from here to here. Because not, because not only you take exponential and then log, but also you need to put your minus term inside, then put in that inside as exponential. Think about it a bit. Okay, you don't need to think about okay, why that minus times inside of explanation. It's, okay, then if you can do that, then it should be easy for you to look at this increasing function of the sufficient statistic S. Okay, such that my likelihood, my likelihood actually have ML property. Okay, then you have sufficient statistics, you have ML property, Karen Rubin theory kicking in. Karen Rubin theory told you that it's, if you do have two properties, then the UMP test of critical region is become what? Your TY bigger than some cutoff. Okay, that's as easy as that is. Okay, by Karen Rubin theory, you can directly claim the sufficient statistics bigger than something is actually your 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 critical region of your MP test. Okay? But we have not finished we, we haven't finished yet, right? We did not finish we did not finish because I still need to looking for exactly cutoff of the C star it. Okay? Good. Then how do I find it? Again using what? Using my type one error to find it. But right here more complicated is because your null hypothesis is a composite distribution. So that means ty is minus i from one to n, then log yi, then bigger than c star h right here. Okay, good. So right here, 
by definition, I wrote it down, but I point it. This guy, not hypothesis, is actually what? Theta smaller than theta right here is a. A smaller than a zero. A smaller than a zero right here. Okay, so it means we still need to be patient, trying to evaluate the probability first, and then trying to find whether or not the maximum happen in the boundary right here. Okay, say if you do lose your patience, say, I say, well, how I don't want to spend whole time to do that, then the best you will guess is what? Your A happen in the boundary. That's for sure. I think 99% is sure your maximum is going to have in the boundary, okay? So let's not do that, let's be more specific. Okay, so that means I do need to spend some time first trying to derive in a probability as a function of A, then to see that probability as a function of A, whether or not it reaching the maximum as A equals to A zero, okay? Okay, then right here, if I can derive in a PDF or CDF of the TY y, y tilde, it's, or saying that it's if I can derive a PDF or CDF of my TY, it's, then I basically solving the jinx about C star, right? If I can find anything about this, right? This is my sufficient statistics. If I can show that my sufficient statistics actually some PDF or some common things I can use, then this guy's nothing but quantile. Okay, you see that? Okay, and then my point is, this question is really long in a way of retiring in a way of, your original CDF right here, you do have a lower bound of theta, and you actually don't like it. Okay, the, 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 the way you say I don't like it because some PDF have a lower bound with theta, it's usually uniform, but it's nothing uniform right here, right? Okay, so one thing you could possibly do is what? You're doing shifting, trying to see what happens, what PDF that is, if you shift the Y minus the theta. That means you shift everything from y to y minus theta, such that your new random variable, for example, right here, say is x right here, is bigger than zero. Okay, I don't like y bigger than theta, but if I can deriving the new random variables x is y minus minus theta. For example, if I deriving x right here. I derive in a new PDF of X, then I will know that X bigger than zero. Then I would like it better. Okay, good. And then, so this what how tricky this question is. So even though you are trying to do your best to deriving the PDF or CDF distribution of the TY, okay, so then, it's actually easier if you can shift your y back to theta first, okay? Which means that it's, so you want to define the random variable w, okay? Uh, it's a log y minus log theta right here. Okay, good. The reason I do that is I do know that would lead, in, lead, that would lead me to a new PDF. Okay, then you ask you ask me it's how do I know that? Well, let's read based on a bunch of you know problem solving. You will know that it's doing that. You can make your f of w right here. It's free w right here is free of theta. W right here is free of theta. Okay, because theta is really annoying in a way of in the domain of my random variable. It okay. Say if you repair me to do so, say right here, right? If I define it, if I divide it by whole, whole numerable W, 
as a log y minus log theta. Then I'm going to save my time right here, but you guys should be able to handle a change of deriving W's PDF. Okay, so W's PDF is going to eventually is A E A W and then W small than infinity. Okay, then A bigger than zero. Okay, then how do you like it right here? in the PDF, right? You like it a lot, right? Why you like it a lot? Because I do know W follow what? Exponential then one over A hat. Okay, so why is that easier for me to do anything? Because I can do this guy right here. I can say probability of minus, right? I from one to N inside guy log y i then minus log theta i can write so right and then if i write so then bigger than c star okay right here in the left hand side right here i actually plus summation i want to end log theta basically a log theta then i do the same thing right hand side plus n log theta Okay, making sense? And then, hold on. I do have in the minus term right here, which is tricky. So let me go here to here. Still equals everything still the same. Say that bigger than say that not. Then probability. I do want to create summation i from one to n w i. Because inside guy right here w i. Okay, I do know that I do know WI follow exponential. I also know summation WI follow what, right? And then I think I do need to change sides. I want to make sure that I did not mess up. I think so. Okay. Then I want to switch sides, then minus C star, then minus N log theta. That's okay. Then the reason I want to do that is. I also know about what this guy follows, right? Okay, because this guy W follows exponential A alpha, one over alpha, then this guy follows gamma distribution with N, then one over alpha. Okay, good. And then, I might, I may have that enough. I may have enough information to for me to evaluate where the suprema occurs. Again, right here, not hypothesis right here. It's a smaller than a zero, right? I think so. A zero right here. Okay. Then I think everything will be tricky. So reason for that is it's not actually easy to see that where the optimum is. But something you might imagine, so you 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 bear with me about it, this. Okay. So the whole thing is a function of A. Okay. Do you see where the do you see where the A is? Your A is here. Okay, so that means you do need to know that when A changes, for example, gamma N1 over A1 compared to gamma N1 over A2. Say if you have A1 smaller than A2, which one is actually bigger? So for example, right here, it's so what I'm trying to mean to write down is actually that. So you took this Gaudi distribution, right? And then imagine if A1 is smaller than A2. And then your scale parameter right here is going to change, right? So that means you do a fixed value of minus z star minus n log theta here. 
okay? So by changing of your scale parameters, you do have two things right here, okay? Then one is A1, then one is A2. Okay, then eventually you have to compare is left hand side quantity, left hand side PDF right here. Okay, okay, so which one is smaller than which one have bigger left hand side probability of this left hand side probability become quantile? I know it's easy, it's, I know it's not easy to see that, I think. Okay, so then. The truth is, I mean, the truth is, the maximum is going to happen in the boundary, in this case as well. So I mean, wi small than c star, then minus n log theta zero, this guy a become a zero. That means your wi follow gamma, then n one over a zero eight. Okay, and then because the whole thing is going to become alpha, right? So type one arrow right alpha right here, alpha, alpha right here. So it means your right hand side of this equation, that means minus c star minus n log theta equals to what? Gamma quantile n one over a zero, then alpha is in the left hand side. Okay, then using that, you can solve in for C star equals to what? C star equals to minus N log theta, then minus gamma N one over A zero, then alpha it. Then you're solving for that C star it. Okay, so that means eventually your critical region is what? Yi then you do have your wi, so that actually minus, minus summation i from one to n, then log yi minus log theta, right? Critical region right here, okay? Then bigger than c star, bigger equal to, then c star minus n log theta minus gamma quantile, then alpha, then plus n theta, plus n log n theta right here. It's critical region. You're taking out both right here, okay? Or you can say equivalently it's, you are right, wi, it's fine as well. Okay, this guy wi, then summation wi, then minus then become smaller than then become chi square and one over a zero then alpha that it okay then this is the answer of the question b okay i think really annoying in a way of trying to evaluate the supreme moment okay any question on b Okay, if not, I'm going to do C. I think hopefully C is relatively easy. Let me see. Usually it's not. Okay, well, I say a bunch of things. You could just take a look. But eventually the most important thing is trying to solve in for pi hat. So this is equation, eventually important. Up to trying to find 80% quantile, pi 0.8. Then you do have CDF right here. It's y a then d y, right? Equals to eighty percent. Okay, so using this formula to find MLE of the pi right here as MLE. Okay, and then this one is actually easy. If you do know the invariance property MLE, what you're going to do is trying to find. 
So right here is what? Right here, nothing but CDF of y up to pi 0.8 given that theta. Okay, equals to one minus theta divided by pi 0.8. Then with a right here, right? This guy is here. CDF of Where is the CDF? Uh, somewhere is the CDF. Mm. Uh, right here, right? Right here. Okay. But this is this is Y one CDF. It's not Y CDF. So why is this, this not right here? So sorry about that. Some way, uh, some way I have y, y1 CDF right here. This is y1 CDF. It's a y1 survival function, okay? But one minus the survival functions is y1 CDF, okay? So then you plug in, okay? Equals to 0.8, right? How do we solve in for pi 0.8, right? You're taking some operations. You move one to right hand side, become minus 0.2. Then you have that minus term become 0.2, and then you take a log. Okay, you can isolate your pi 0 8. Let me skip that as well. Then eventually you will see this guy pi 0 8 equals to theta times one fifth, and then minus. One eight. Or you can say theta phi minus one. This guy is my pi point eight. Yet theta times phi then one over a. Okay. Then how do I know about pi point eight MLE? Easy, right? This question theta is given such known quantity is a constant. Don't do anything, but phi divided by a hat right here. Okay, this is MLE for pi point eight. Then based on invariance property of the MLE. Okay, so I really want to write this guy. Uh, just theta phi then one over actually this guy is eventually is w bar you can double check it okay again wi definition is right here where's wi wi is right here okay log y minus log theta eventually you can double check it theta phi w bar let's see your Pi point eight hat. I'm also asking you about hey, how do you deriving large simple property of a pi point eight hat? Okay, I'm trying to deriving large simple property. Right here. Okay, again, it's did you see your friend? I think I do see my W bar right here. Okay, so that means there are two approaches actually. Okay, so one approach is you can use is what? I can derive in W bars. If I actually writing down E W one zero variance W one right here. What property I'm using? Central limit theory. Okay, so then the best you want to do is trying to deriving E W one it. I remember we do say W one follow what? W one actually follow exponential one over a. That means this guy is a minus goes to d normal zero whereas w1 
exponential distribution minus two. Okay, you can write so, and then right now you are trying to make it happen is what? I do have pi hat 0.8 is a function of w bar right here, right? That means specifically this guy equals to I apply some g function on w bar to get a pi hat 0.8 and then I'm going to apply the same g function on inverse a inverse and then going to d then no more than zero I'm going to write point a inverse then taking this guy squared then taking original variance how do I know I can use in that based on what method nothing but delta method right then again it's delta method it's then what is the g function then? What function apply on w bar to give you pi 0.8 hat then? Looking at this. It shouldn't be surprised the g function is actually what? Theta then phi then x. Right? You apply, you apply w bar into x, it's right here. Right? Give you the answer right here. Okay? Good. Then you apply your g function, g prime x, theta phi x, then log phi, right? Yeah, log phi. Okay? And then, but annoying thing is, this guy in plugging a minus, so that means g prime a minus equals to theta phi a inverse then log five it's okay then you taking square theta just be careful a taking square eight minus two right oh no two minus one why is taking square two minus two two sorry about that two minus one and then this guy square okay hopefully i did not make any stupid errors and then eventually variance will be times a minus two it's become variance so that's if it happened let's leave it here okay good so that means you can actually write down it through then GW, which basically is right here, pi hat 0.8, then minus theta phi a inverse. That guy eventually, this guy is pi 0.8, not surprising, goes to D, then normal, then zero. You do have theta square phi to a inverse, log phi taking square, then a minus two puts a variance. Then you actually finish your ensemble properties of a pi hat 0.8. Okay, I know it's complicated. It's actually going to be simplified. I do simplify it. Eventually, that guy equals to uh, log phi square, then a minus it. Oh no, it's not that easy, sorry about that. So forget about what I'm saying here, you could just leave it here as a final question, I think. Okay, in the solution key, I actually write down it, but that's a long way to go, so I just don't want to, I actually taking log, that would make everything easier, but Let's forget about it because I need to talk about another delta method. So I just leave it here. Okay, good. So again, it's like I said, I said there's two methods. Okay, so this guy right here, very straightforward. 
using central limit theory. Okay, to get this, to get this. Easy, right? So, another thing I want to say is, W bar also MLE W bar W bar is the MLE of A inverse as well. Remember the property of MLE? You can actually deriving using the this using the property of MLE, which was a variance set. It's I1 inverse, then inverse it. Or if we just say A, actually it doesn't matter at all. Okay. I'm going to encourage you to try this guy right here. Eventually, that will be equals to A minus 2x. Okay? If you're actually using WI's exponential distribution, you will see that happens in terms of A minus 2. Okay? Double check that for you to practice about, hey, I'm teaching about MLE. I also know about W bar is MLE of A inverse. Could I use the same idea using the inverse of information number to derive the variance of the W bar as MLE? Okay. Again, it's this line right here, easy to use about central limit theory. You pass it, prefer it. Whenever you saw some W bars, you saw some bars using central limit theory, easy to handle. But in the meantime, it's that's the meter of MLE as well. Then you might want to use the MLE's property. The variance part would be information number to get the variance part as well. Okay, so I'm going to skip about D because we don't have time to do so. Okay, and then uh, I think, oh, that's why it's not that difficult then. You just like uh, taking that, taking this, you taking this, trying to isolate it, you will alpha in the middle then. On, I'm asking for alpha of it. Uh, no, I'm asking for uh, I'm asking for pi point eight. Right? From here, five point this guy, right, should be easy for you to construct it. So which means okay, this guy don't forget asymptotic distribution. So it's asymptotic times interval. And you do know this guy right here. Pi hat point eight minus pi point eight. Then divided by square root of everything right here, right? Right here. Okay, so I don't want to write it in a long way. Okay, so then you don't know what I'm trying to do right here. And bigger and smaller than right here, right? Okay, so let me just put this guy, da, 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 hold this guy right here. Okay, so then right here, nothing but z minus, uh, minus z one minus half over two, then z one minus half over two. Make sure you do not quantile to quantile. This guy syntactically, inside guy syntactically normal zero one. So I can write quantile to quantile as a z's, as a syntactic complex interval. Then by doing so, really nothing but eventually you put your pi 0.8 in the middle and do some operations, okay? That should be easy to find low point per pound for you in D. Okay, I, I'm kind of tired. It's 146 right now. And then in three, let me just give something pretty big because I think I should be able to handle it. For example, in A, trying to show that summation xi then summation xi square okay are complete sufficient statistics for mu sigma square how to show that easy right just using exponential family 
Okay. Good. Then you're working hard to nail down H, X, C, theta. And then right now you have two U, mu, and sigma square unknown. So your anticipated so your exponential part is going to be W1, theta1, uh, W1, theta, T1, Xi, then W2, theta, T2, Xi. Okay. So then you're using the property of the exponential family to show that it's so not hot, not surprising to see that T1 Xi is going to become Xi, then T2 Xi is going to become Xi squared. Okay, trying to working hard on that expression of the exponential family, then you will see that T1, T2 like that way, and then using a property of special memory, put summation I on it. Okay, then, in B, okay, find a constant C such that E X equals sigma. This belongs to meter number one. It's okay. Let me. I actually do that in class, so I'm going to skip that bunch as well. That means I'm going to jump a little bit. Okay. So really, eventually, you're going to using that property of n times one sigma square follow chi square one. Okay. Then you're using that property because eventually you want to write in down deriving that square root of n minus one x squared then sigma squared right here. Really, if you're thinking about this guy is y equals to right this random variable, and this guy is nothing but equation exploitation, then square root of y is right here. And then you do know y follows, you do know y follows chi square n minus one. So that means deriving expectation, nothing but from this infinity, then go to the y, then times PDF of y right here, then dy. And then you do know y follow chi square, so you do know PDF of y, PDF of y's, right? You, 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 you pull out your distribution table and plug in the distribution of y is as a chi square n minus one. Okay, of course you can also based on memory because this guy's gamma, then m minus one, two, then two, right? I think so. Okay, then based on gamma's PDF, you can write down f of y as well. Eventually you're going to using something that's why you have constant right here. Then you're going to creating that this guy inside of the PDF again. Okay, so you're going to having some kind of conversation. You're trying to create something, you compensate it in the outside. Okay, hopefully, you understand what I'm saying. And then eventually, you can get one thing it's its answer. Let me pull out that to you it's a gamma and divided by two gamma n minus one divided by two, then square root of two it. Okay, then you can get this number right here. So it's constant. So right here it's, so again it's, you get constant, you could simplify right here become expectation, then square root m minus one, then s divided by sigma equals to, gamma n over two, gamma n minus one divided by two, square root of two. Then it should be easy for you to look at is what? How do you actually having that CS, right? So you imagine theta going out, whole constant going in. Eventually you have that C right here and it equals to sigma. You guys see that? Okay, oh, so, oh, how about write this guy is right here, say it's comes, comes in C star right here. Okay, the whole thing is C star, for example. Then eventually I can write it square root of n divided by C star. Square root of n divided by C star, right? I put say C star inside exploitation, nothing changes. Then pull sigma square outside exploitation, nothing changes away, or then become sigma. Then this guy exactly the C come looking for what's the answer it's okay then by doing that 
Okay, let me see what else I'm asking. I'm also I'm only asking about finding their C constant, right? Yeah, only about that. Then in C, okay, basically I'm saying it's okay. So E top point A is 80% quantile of the distribution of X equals log Y. And you do know what distribution of X is, right? I think. Okay, let me make sure that Y uh Y is the log norm normality and the X is normality, I think. Okay, so then X normality, the reason why I can find Okay, good. So because X is normality, so that means right here, I'm saying trying to find your U and VU E, okay, of the E top point eight, which means that it's, I'm looking for, this is a quantile E top point eight U and VU E. And then this guy equals to point two because it's bigger, right? Any percent quantile, the right hand side is 20%. Okay, then you are trying to do your best to find eta point eight as a function of mu and the sigma squared or sigma either way. Okay, by doing so, you know that x minus mu divided by sigma because you do know x follows normal mu sigma squared and then bigger than eta point eight minus mu divided by sigma. Nothing changes still point two. Okay. And then this guy no more zero one. You do know what his quantile is to satisfy this, right? This guy is nothing but z point eight. You can actually using your table to find what number that is. I don't know what the number that is though. Okay. So z point eight should be a number. So, which means that it's all I want to ask is actually is this. So I do know e top point eight minus mu divided by sigma is z point eight. Okay, then that gives the e top point eight is uh, mu plus z point eight then sigma. Okay. Then you ask yourself, how do I find about eta point eight as estimation? So eta point eight is a parameter, and then it's a function of mu and then sigma right here. Okay, and then they're asking me about u and v u e, right? And then well, you can find some, you know, that there are two, there are two properties. So again, maybe you have time. I want to talk about. I don't know if I want to talk about more, more than that. But let me just small review as this is. How do I find U and V U E? Right. Either you are using what, Lehman Shapet theory. Actually, both are using Lehman Shapet theory. Number one is. I do have easy unbiased statistics and condition on complete sufficient statistics. Then this guy's U and VUE by Lehman Shapet theory, right? Or I say the second one would be it. I taking the function of my complete sufficient statistics. Okay, hopefully, eventually, this guy is A plus B tau theta right or maybe it's hopefully eventually is like right here is eta point a right i cross my fingers the reason for that is what i can always if i linear i can always move that right here to become to create a basis in major then by lemon chaffee this guy is a U and V as well. And the more frequent than not is you do actually working on the complete sufficient statistics directly. Okay, because phi function right here, any function right here. 
the most easy function is what identical function okay so you try here and there trying to see whether method one or method two could give you e and vue that's the easy way okay in this question did you see any easy that do you see any easy and bad statistics no right but i do know about complete sufficient statistic from a is summation xi then summation xi square and then you will see right here it's i do a mu hat plus z point hat cs right here from a and v okay and then that give me what that give me that give me expected value of that statistics is equals to mu plus z point eight then sigma equals to eta point eight right so that means this guy is an unbiased statistics of eta point eight good also this guy is a function of complete and sufficient statistics these two guys are both function of summation xi and summation xi square okay so that based on the lemon lemon shaffet theory actually i'm using what i'm using this guy right here this guy right here right just happen to be this guy a is zero b is one okay i'm taking expectation on a complete sufficient statistics or a function of service or actually this guy more closely this guy by the means is i think i taking expectation on the function of complete sufficient statistics if i can get and basis dimensions in linear way that to operation then i will nail down that function of complete sufficient statistics as soon as i'm biased then i can call that guy is a umvue making sense okay it's two already so i'm not going further i don't want to take your time away i'm tired as well okay so let me stop here so i think number four is not super difficult okay but number four you do need to pay attention you need to you need to be patient on working on local functions okay because you don't see much about Bernoulli for each one so you always think about one i'm sorry it's not it you don't see quite often it's a binomial for each one for example right here from x1 to xn each guys are binomial nip okay you see more often it's x1 to xn Bernoulli then summation x is binomial right but in number four it's x1 to xn they are all Bernoulli's okay so i don't know if you have that experience or not trying to solving for binomials that nip to get a results okay but this guy also another one to mention is this guy is not id data okay so whenever you're using the information don't use in the n times i1 things you want to evaluate the whole information together okay whole information nothing but taking second directive of your lack of function it's okay so which means if you're working on the word type test okay then remember don't write down n i1 just using the i n as a whole expect information sounds good okay so i do have question right here uh okay oh no it's just okay oh thank you benji no problem at all on this okay um as you can imagine it's not easy final exams it's taking me a long time to do derivation but they got four i think they got 4.5 hours this year i think 
but this year you got six hours, so I think you guys have a lot of time to grind it out. Okay. So if you don't, if you really don't understand about a supreme um, a somewhere a zero, we can talking back to I I could draw the exact function to see which one why they happen in the supreme um, Okay. But if in the exam you don't really have no idea, okay, just plugging a zero. Okay, we're just taking one point away. Not big, no, no big deal, right? Only one point. Okay, good. So, uh, if you guys, if you guys have questions, you guys could stay in the room. If not, I will close out. This. I will, I'm going to stop the recording first, and then I will stay for a little bit, and then to see if I have any other questions about this midterms.